All right, I'm here talking with Jay Radcliffe, who, uh, if you don't know by now, you really should uh, do a little more reading. He does some fascinating research on uh, uh, vulnerabilities in implanted medical devices, uh, medical device security, and specifically on insulin pumps. That's correct. Uh, Jay, give us a little uh, update on what's been happening with your research over the last two years. Sure. So earlier this year, um, I was I currently wear an insulin pump, and I was. I had an experience with my insulin pump where I had very low blood sugar, uh, sub 50s blood sugar, which is a very dangerous condition to be in. The following day after that, I went and tried to kind of figure out exactly how my blood sugar got that low. And I discovered that I gave myself too much insulin by about eight units. And I said, wow, that's a lot. How did in the world did that happen? And I went through the history of the insulin pump and discovered that it made a mistake. It miscalculated by eight units. And I wondered how would is it able to do that? And the, this is normally very, very accurate. Absolutely, right? yeah. you know. And what I discovered was that I did a battery change that night. And when you do a battery change, it turns out that it forgets how much medicine is in your body. So the insulin pumps only one of its only jobs in life is to remember how much medicine is in your body. And I was really shocked to discover that when you change the battery, it just throws that information away. So I spoke to people at the FDA because I've worked with them in the past on these types of issues from two years ago. And I said, do you want me to submit this? Is this something that you consider to be a big problem? And they said, absolutely. So I submitted it in the normal channels through the FDA so that way they could look at it, verify that, that yes, indeed, that is a problem and it's a major problem. And then they give it to the vendor. And then the vendor will contact me. And they sent a nurse to contact me. She called me and the, the, was very vendor, helpful. Yes. Yes, Animus is the company. They had one of their nurses call me to make sure that I was okay about 45 days after I submitted it. And uh, we had a discussion about it, and the discussion led us to say, well, we should escalate this issue so that way the engineering staff could know about it. So we had a talk, we had a phone call with the engineering staff and their medical officer, and they said, uh, we designed the pump to work like that. And when I pressed them to how that is a safer than all the other insulin pumps, uh, I tested this on five different insulin pumps, and none of them forget that information when you change their battery. So when I pressed them to describe how it's safer, they couldn't answer that question. And they also told me that they have no intentions of fixing uh, that they device. They actually described it to you as being a feature. Yes. They said this isn't a bug or design flaw, this is a feature. Um, even though they couldn't describe how it, that was safer, nor did they answer how this situation is less severe. Had they disclosed that, that this feature was available and, and with this device? Yes. It is actually on page 74 of their 350 page manual. It is one sentence. It says, when you change the battery, it will forget the insulin on board statistic as well as any temporary configurations you might have set up. And so at that point you're supposed to manually reconfigure uh, the dosage? You, uh, actually, the dosage? you actually can't. Uh, you can't tell it, hey, don't forget about this you know, four units of insulin I have in my body. You have to manually adjust it in your head. So all of the fancy calculators and wizards that they have in these things to make sure you get the correct insulin, you have to override them and change them. So for about four hours after you change the battery, up to four hours after you change the battery, all of that math is incorrect. And so about uh, how often do you have to change a battery in one of these devices? If you use a standard alkaline AA battery, you would change it about once, uh, once every 10 days. Okay. If you change, if you have a lithium battery, those can last three to four weeks. Okay, so uh, quite regularly. Yes. <laughs> You are actually putting your life in danger, potentially. Absolutely. When you change the battery in this device. Now, okay, when you said you got uh, a little too high a dose yeah. of insulin, uh, explain to everybody what that means. How sure. Much and so, uh, diabetics try to keep their blood sugar around 100. And the difference between having my blood sugar at 100 and having my blood sugar at zero would be five units for me. So in this case, I gave myself eight units too much. And those numbers are going to change for every person, they're different, but that calculation is going to be about the same. So if you give yourself, it doesn't take much to give yourself too much, and then you're in kind of a life-threatening position of having low blood sugar. 
So now you took this to the FDA, they agreed that it was a problem enough to escalate it to uh, get in contact with the vendor. Uh, the yes. vendor said uh, it's not a problem, it's a feature. Yes. And so is that where the story ends then? That's where the story is right now. The FDA does not have the ability to force them to make any changes. Once they've approved an, a device, it takes a lot for them to have to, to pull it. You know, and I don't think they should pull it. Right? I don't think they should do a full recall and tell everybody to stop using their insulin pumps. But just like you have a cell phone, you can have some new software on it. You know, everybody's gone through that, oh, you have to update your software. Or on your computer where it says, you need to apply these patches to make your computer safer. We can do that with these types of devices. Other diabetic devices do this and have no problem saying, hey, we can update this, we found a small problem. Even though it's a rare condition, it's still something that we want to be concerned about and make these devices safer. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's that much data that the, the unit would have to retain uh, in a battery change. It's storing it... All of, the other, all of the other insulin pumps on the market do not have this problem. So from a technological perspective, it's very, very easy to address this situation. So uh, so what's the next step? I mean, you're, you're not just a researcher, you're also an advocate. So. Yes. So I'm going to be pressing the FDA a little bit more to find out what else we can do. And I'm also very curious to find out how the other Animus users respond. You know, are they are they going to be upset about this? You know, are they going to put pressure on, on vendors like Animus to be more proactive when fixing these types of problems? And my hope is to try and, and push people, push the industry to, to be more proactive in that way. Well, it's really fascinating research. Uh, uh, you know, I've been keeping up with it for a couple of years now. Uh, looking forward to, uh, uh, to more from you and uh, hopefully some better resolutions than, uh, than the one we have right now. Well, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Jay Radcliffe, everybody.